right. Well, you guys are going to be excited about this one because the uh, next guest is the director of technical support at Evernote. She was also Woo! before that the community manager at Floodgate Entertainment and helped streamline the HR department at the Boston Medical Center. So please put your hands together for Heather Wild. Yay! Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's. So because you're such an interesting person that dabbles in so many different arts, we could go on for a long time. But I'm going to try to keep this related to a few things that are based around your passion and my passion, which is Evernote, because I like this product a lot. And I was really excited to hear that you had a history in it. So um, you actually got an endorsement on your LinkedIn account from Phil, the CEO of Evernote. And he said that you untangled many of the thorny problems that they had when they were getting the company off the ground. So tell us, what were those thorny problems? And what are some of the ways that you solve thorny problems that maybe we could use for our startups? Uh, well, we have so many different thorny problems. It's really hard to pinpoint one particular one. But I'll tell you about how I approach every problem that comes to me. Yeah. Um, basically, I will take a particular problem, I'll look at it, um, and bring it down to its elements. And I'll just analyze it and figure out, like, generally when something is in front of me, it has always just individual elements there that aren't necessarily on the surface. So you just have to break it down, analyze it, and then you can attack it. So that's how I approach every single thing that I'm doing, and then then you can just find the answer. Okay, well, then, what do you mean? So what do, how do you describe analyzing a problem for how to fix it? Like, What is the kind of methodology that you're using and trying to teach to the other Evernote employees? Um, what, what I'll generally do is I'll tell them to um, think through what somebody is actually trying to say. Like, will just listen to the problem rather than hear. What, okay. what people are saying isn't always what they mean. So. Oh, really? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Uh, well, sometimes what they sometimes people use a lot of words when they're just trying to cover up one little sentence, one little thought. And what you need to do is keep trying to figure out what that grain of truth is behind all those words. Okay, so you talk about kind of like an unhappy client or a customer or someone that calls you up and you try to get to the bottom of like really what's making them upset even if it's not right on the surface? That or any problem. This can be applied to anything that you're doing. Okay. So yeah, so any any issue that, that comes up with a client, um, a customer, or even just you, maybe just me? talking to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, me talking right now, I'm using a whole lot of words to say analyze. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, we'll move on to listening then, because that's, that's, that was the next topic that you seemed really passionate about in our pre-interview. So I get this sense uh, that like, when you talk about people need to listen more, that it kind of has this connotation that's not normally like what I think of as listening. You seem to use it as kind of this thing to build a company around, like Apple did, like try to just listen to what people did and like do it better. You kind of use it as a knowledge shortcut cut and then you also kind of talk about knowledge or talk about listening as a skill so let me know um, explain like what you mean by listening and like what a good listener really entails uh, what I mean by listening is basically sitting back and taking in what the elements around you are like so when people are I mean just absorb so when I, when I say listen, I mean absorb, not not necessarily okay, yeah, yeah. listen to, or not necessarily again hear what some what the words that people are saying, but hear what the meaning behind the words. So truly understand, and that's what I mean. Okay, so. well that makes sense. And then um, so you talked about like one of the things entrepreneurs come across a lot is that they get stressed out, like they're like, oh, I got all this money on the line, like my life's on the line, and they're so kind of stuck working on this that they're not maybe listening to people who already have the solution. So talk a little bit about uh, how you would handle the stress and how listening can maybe help with that. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so one of the things that, that entrepreneurs run into is that they get stuck in a corner. They don't understand that there's ar already a great community out there of people that have already handled these problems before or something very similar to them. So they believe that, or when you're stuck in this corner, you think that you're the only one that's ever been there. Right. So if they would just listen and learn from the people that are out there, <laughs> then... Right, the last thing you think to do when you're getting <laughs> slammed is like, I need to just calm down and like go start yeah. absorbing things, but not solve this problem exactly this moment, but try to see if anyone else has solved it. Yeah, so if you can just step back when you're in that corner, then you can absorb everything else and take in that great mentor community that's Do you guys have there. some good examples at Evernote where you guys weren't looking and then you slowed down and actually got the solution quicker? 
Uh, it happens all the time. Like uh, sometimes we work in teams at Evernote, so uh, sometimes we'll be in an isolated team and then. Uh, we'll be working on a problem and then somebody will just suddenly say, wait a second, maybe the ops team has already encountered this. And then you go and they'll be like, oh yeah, we, we did this last week and then they have the end. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, some. Of, one of the things you said you were passionate about is just always staying educated. Like you seem to really love just learning things. Like you said you want to never really be great at a company once it kind of grows because you like to just keep starting, starting things, getting them all set up and letting them go. Explain where that passion comes from and what it is about learning that you think is motivating to you uh, and maybe I'd to other people too? I don't know where it comes from. I just always have had it. But um, I, I do. I really, I, I read three to five hours a day. I, oh, okay. <laughs> I just, just, yeah. Outside of work, just doing that. So I love learning a new thing, um, at least one new thing every day. And it's just, I, I just find that if you don't use your brain, if you don't expand that constantly, then you, you just can't keep making those connections uh, to grow as a person. So. Uh, yeah. It's just useful in work because you never know when those connections are going to be. And I actually yeah. had thought about this in, in a meeting I had the other day uh, with our designer, uh, one of our designers at work. Uh, he, he and I were brainstorming about something and then suddenly uh, he said one thing and then it made me realize that Vine got its name because of Vignette. And I hadn't really thought about oh, it before. Oh, when that clicked for you, yeah, you just got just that clicked. dopamine rush, and you yeah, were like, and, "Yeah, that's." And he hadn't, and he was like, <laughs> "I never even thought of like I didn't know about the word vignette, meaning the word that you meant." And he's like, "I didn't mean it in that way." No, I didn't and, either. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Vine actually does mean vignette, and I looked it up after that. But. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? How about your fun hanging out? Do you just snap off little facts like that all the time? Yeah, uh, my friend, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> a friend of mine says I have a champagne brain because it yeah. never. Knows what's going to bubble up. <laughs> It's good, the champagne brain. That's really funny. Okay, so let me. Okay, so I gave you a little bit of homework since you said you kind of like homework and you like learning about things. So I asked you to learn something about the downtown community, and not only just tell us what it is that you learned, but walk us a little bit through the process about how you went about kind of with this blank slate. Like, where did you start diving into questions, and how did you formulate your question, and then what was the answer? Okay, so um, the you asked me to find out about the uh, ice skating rink at the Gold Spike Casino. Right, cold so, cold okay. spike we call it in the back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, I found out that it is uh, it was brought in by Tony Shea, and uh, right. it is a synthetic ice rink. And the way that I found out by uh, the way I found out about this was I just started uh, looking about. Or I started looking up articles on Google um, where everybody starts, right, uh, <laughs> to find out what I could find anything at all about the ice rink. And then um, there wasn't actually very much. It, it was just like, oh, we're about to do this thing. So then I, I yeah. went to it's the pretty new, yeah. I found the manufacturer of the ice rink. Oh, OK. And uh, who manufactures it? Uh, I can't remember right okay. now, actually. But I found out, like, I went to who was manufacturing it. It's like a company in New York. Um, and then it was the, like, I found that it was a resin that I actually used to use when I ice skated. Like, so it's plus. Oh, you had, and you happen to be an ice skater? When I was a kid. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so it's synthetic ice skates. Like, you don't ever use your own ice skates on that thing, because they'll ruin, it'll tear it up. <laughs> Just use the rental skates. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a resin, so it's a plastic? Or yeah, is it's, it like a, it's a, a plastic. It'll be good for about four years. Um, and, uh, yeah, so. It, okay, and did you get that when you kind of figured out what it was made of? Did you get that little moment thing that you like? Yeah, and it was good because I, I remembered actually skating on these when I was a kid, when I was practicing, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, so brought back the memories. Did you go to your Evernote and pull up the old photos and all that stuff? <laughs> Evernote hasn't been around that long. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, anyways, but people can check you out. You do, a, it sounds like you have a pretty interesting Twitter feed, too, but they can, so you, you combined Heather, your first name, and then Ariel from the the, the little mermaid, mermaid, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Probably favorite character of yours or something. So you have, for your Twitter account, you combine the two in the, um, Heather Reel. So H-E-A-T-H-R-I-E-L. And you guys can follow her on Twitter. And then uh, anything else you want to talk about? Any other projects? Uh, yeah, actually, um, Girls in Tech is a group that I'm in Woo! here yeah, in Vegas. Yeah, Christina, this week. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're doing a lot of stuff yeah. next year uh, in 2014. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. So uh, check out Girls in Tech on Meetup and also it, on Facebook, Girls in Tech Las Vegas. Uh, and you'll find there, uh, we're just, there's a whole lot of things that we're going to be doing, uh, 
it's all in progress right now. It's so. good. Yeah, 2014 is going to be a fun year. So thank you very much for coming out and talking with us. Everybody Thanks. check her out online. And thank you very much for talking to us about Evernote and great entrepreneurial history. So keep learning, everybody.